Hi everyone, welcome back to today's match channel. Um, today I'm going to start a new series on calculus, and calculus is a very, very big topic in math. It's also a really important topic, and uh, you know, most people don't really learn calculus until college, first year of college. Maybe if you're taking an advanced class, you'll learn in the senior year of high school. Uh, most people consider calculus a very difficult area of math, but um, I think the basic ideas aren't really all that difficult. Uh, and the starting point, I think the starting point for learning calculus is limits. So I'm going to make this kind of a sub-series on limits. Uh, I'll probably make several videos on limits before I go further into calculus. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about um, some paradoxes from ancient Greece known as Zeno's paradoxes. There's a whole bunch of these. I'm only going to present two in this video. Uh, so anyway, let's get started. So what are Zeno's paradox? Well, there was an ancient Greek philosopher named Zeno, in the, uh, Zeno of Elia in the 5th century BC. He presented several paradoxes. He was trying to argue that motion is impossible. He thought motion was impossible. It was just an illusion, which is kind of a weird idea. I mean, and the reason he, he actually came up with several, I guess at that time they were considered pretty convincing arguments that motion was impossible. And it turns out the reason he thought this is because the Greeks, uh, I don't think it was really any of the Greeks except for maybe Archimedes, who really didn't have a concept of what a limit was. That's the key concept that's missing in all of his paradoxes. So anyway, I'm just going to describe a couple of them. Uh, I think the first one, which is probably the simplest one to state, is the dichotomy paradox. And the, re the way that one goes is, you're supposed to imagine that the, the, that you're, you're you're trying to move from from a given point A, that's your starting point, to a given destination B. Well, how do you get there? Well, in order to get from A to B, you first have to go halfway, obviously. So let's call C the midpoint of A and B. So first you have to go from A to C, and then to get from C to B, you can repeat the same argument. First you have to go to the midpoint between C and B. That's another point D. And you have to keep going like this. Each time, you still have to go another halfway. So there's going to be infinitely many steps, infinitely many times. You have to go halfway from where you are to your final destination. And I guess the argument is you have to do this infinitely many times. And that, that means it's going to take an infinite amount of time, an infinite number of steps. So you can never get to B. That's the argument anyway. And uh, there's another uh, paradox which I want to talk about. It's a similar paradox. This is the paradox involving a race between Achilles and the tortoise. Um, this might be the most well-known of Zeno's paradoxes. So imagine that Achilles was a really fast runner. I think he was considered the fastest runner in ancient Greece. Uh, uh, he was also a big war hero. Um, and uh, so... Um, imagine that he's, he wants to have a race with a tortoise, and obviously he's much faster than a tortoise. Say he can run uh, um, uh, 10 meters per second. That would be a 100-meter dash in 10 seconds. That's pretty damn fast. That's almost as fast as the fastest runners today. But let's just assume he can run that fast. And let's say the tortoise can only move one meter per second. That's actually, I think, pretty fast for a tortoise. But let's just assume that. So, and then, so since Achilles is obviously much faster than the tortoise, he decides to give the tortoise a head start. He gives him a 100-meter head start. So what's going to happen? Achilles has to first catch up to the tortoise. He has to move to where the tortoise is at the beginning of the race. That's 100 meters in front of him. That takes him 10 seconds. But by the time that Achilles reaches that point, the tortoise will have uh, moved one me uh, or 10 meters because he had 10 seconds it took. 10 seconds for Achilles to get to that point. By then, the tortoise has moved up 10 meters. Well, now what Achilles has to do? He still has to catch up the tortoise, so he has to run another 10 meters to catch up to where the tortoise is at that moment. But by then, the tortoise will move further still. He'll move another one meter. And so you can see, if you keep repeating this, if Achilles still keeps having to run up to where the tortoise was at the previous moment, he'll never catch up because the tortoise will have always run ahead a little bit. Kind of the same type of argument as a dichotomy paradox. And it involves infinitely many steps again. And uh, this was another argument that Zeno and I guess some other 
uh, ancient Greek philosophers used to argue that motion was impossible. They actually believed this, I think. And um, so why were they wrong? I mean, obviously, we all know that motion is possible because we're moving all the time, right? I mean, uh, it's kind of ridiculous to think that motion's impossible, that it's just an illusion. I mean, uh, so how can we resolve these paradoxes? Well, the key concept that's missing from both of these paradoxes is a concept of a limit. And the whole idea of a limit is what happens when you repeat a process infinitely many times. It turns out that just because you're repeating a process infinitely many times, that doesn't mean you can never complete the process. That was where the Greeks went wrong. And uh, just to illustrate that, I'm going to resolve both paradoxes. First, I'm going to resolve the dichotomy paradox. So how do we get from A to B? Um, well, let's say A and B are separated by 16 meters. So, uh, you know, like the argument says, we have to go halfway first. We have to go to the midpoint. That's 8 meters. And then we have to go another halfway. That's another 4 meters. Then we have to go another halfway. That's another 2 meters. Uh, each time, you have to keep taking steps that are half as big as the previous step. So you're going to end up with an infinite sum, infinitely many terms. 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth and so on. So you're adding infinitely many terms. And I think what the Greeks were arguing, what Zeno was arguing, was that this is an infinite process. You're infinite, adding infinitely many numbers, therefore the sum should be infinity. Well, that's wrong. See, this is an example of what's called a converging series. And obviously the Greeks didn't know about converging series. That This involves a limit. And uh, this is not that hard to analyze. So let's see what's going on here. So let's just uh, evaluate with the, the, the partial sums. We don't have to evaluate the whole sum. We can evaluate a finite number of terms. And let's call Tk the sum of the first k terms of this series. So for instance, T1 is 8 because that's the first uh, sum and. T2 is 12, that's 8 plus 4. Uh, T3 is 14, that's 8 plus 4 plus 2. T4 is 15, that's 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, so on. But you should notice something kind of interesting here. How can we prove that this, this sequence converges? Well, we can write these sums a different way. Notice we can write A to 16 minus 8. And we can write T2, that's 12. We can write that as 16 minus 4. We can write T3 as 16 minus 2. Uh, we can write T4 as 16 minus 1. We can write T5 as 16 minus a half. I think you see what's going on here. The difference from 16 is always uh, um, a fraction. It's going to be a, it's going to be something that's decreasing by a factor of two in each step. And I think you can see that the, what's left over here goes to zero. I mean, powers of two. Here, here's the idea. Here's where we use limits. I mean, what we the, in general we could write tk is 16 minus 1 over 2 to the k minus 4, I think. Uh, yeah. So, but notice that 2 to the k minus 4, k is increasing. k is growing without limit. So k minus 4 is going to be an uh, increasing integer. It keeps increasing. 2 to the k minus 4 increases even faster than that. And it's pretty clear that it goes to infinity. and actually grows pretty fast. So the, the reciprocal of that. 1 over 2 to the k minus 4, that's going to go to 0. Because anything that goes to infinity, if you take the reciprocal, is going to go to 0. So I think it's pretty easy to see that the thing that's left over and all these partial sums goes to 0. So you're going to get in a limit in which k goes to infinity, you're going to get 16 minus something that goes to 0. So that limit is just 16. That's how you resolve this paradox. So you have to use a limit. And uh, once you understand what a limit is and that you can get a limit by taking something that uh, a process that takes infinitely many steps and that concept of a limit makes sense. Of course, you have to do some math to kind of prove this rigorously, but I think you get the idea. This limit exists and this limit is zero. And so the limit of the time, the total time, or the, or the, yeah, the total time, I guess, it takes to go from A to B is going to be 16 seconds, uh, or the distance is 16 meters, if you like. So anyway, uh, yeah, and so that resolves the dichotomy paradox. And we can also resolve the paradox of the Achilles and the tortoise. And for this one, we don't even really have to use limits. 
We could just use the notion of speed, instantaneous speed, if you like. And I think we all know what speed means. I mean, uh, you know, just because, I, I mean, we all know we drive and your speedometer tells us how fast we're driving. So if we're driving 60 miles an hour, we don't have to drive for a whole hour to know that we're driving 60 miles an hour. We just read what it says on the speedometer. The speedometer is measuring our instantaneous speed. And that actually is a limit. I'm not going to get into that right now. But it's easy. If the speed's constant, then we don't have to worry too much. We just get linear equations for, for the, uh, you know, the position of Achilles and the position of the torus as, a fun as functions of time. So, uh, since, so let's say Achilles, I said Achilles was running at 10 meters per second. Let's set up a coordinate system in which he starts at position zero, x equals zero. So we're setting up an x-axis along the direction that Achilles and the tortoise are, are moving. And Achilles starts at x equals zero. The tortoise starts at x equals 100. Uh, x is at meters. And uh, like I said, Achilles is running 10 meters per second. So we can write uh, Achilles' uh, uh, equation of motion as uh, 10t. After t seconds, his position is exactly 10t meters from his starting point. That's pretty easy to see. After one second, he's going to run 10 meters. So 10 times 1 is 10. After two seconds, he's going to run 20 meters. So 10 times 2 is 20. After 10 seconds, he'll run 100 meters. 10 times 10 is 100. You see how that works. So that's, that's Achilles' position as a function of time. But what about the tortoise? That one's a little more complicated because the tortoise is starting at x equals 100, but it's moving at 1 meters per second. So it's pretty easy to see that the position of the tortoise after t seconds is this 100 plus t. For instance, after 1 second, he'll be at x equals 101 meters. After 2 seconds, he'll be at x equals 102 meters, so on. After 10 seconds, he'll be at x 110 meters. Uh, and now what do we do? We have two equations of motion. One for Achilles and one for the tortoise. And we just uh, uh, set them equal to each other. We're trying to solve two simultaneous linear equations. You know, if I had a graph, you'd see two lines, two linear graphs that meet at a point. Two, two lines that aren't parallel, and these lines are not parallel. They don't have the same slope. So they, they meet at a point, and we just have to find that point. So we, we solve this simultaneous uh, set of equations, 10t equals 100 plus t. That's an easy equation to solve. Just subtract t from both sides. You get 9t equals 100. Divide both sides by 9. You get t equals 100 over 9. Or if you want to write that as a, as a, a, a reduced fraction, you write uh, 11 and 1 ninth. So it takes exactly 11 and 1 ninth seconds for Achilles to catch up to the tortoise. And you can do even more than that. You can determine uh, what position they're going to be, how far Achilles will have to run from a starting point. Well, that's easy. Since Achilles is running at 10 meters per second, you just multiply his time, which is 11 and 1 ninth seconds, by 10. And if you do that, you'll get 111 and 1 ninth. So the distance that Achilles has to run is 111 and 1 ninth meters. And that's going to be the position of the tortoise when he catches up to it. So he does catch up to the tortoise. As a matter of fact, he could keep running and pass up the tortoise, obviously. He will pass up as soon as he catches up to him. So that's how you resolve both of these paradoxes. Uh, pretty easy. And like I said, the key concept that was missing is the concept of a limit. And I guess it's kind of unfortunate that the ancient Greeks didn't come up with a concept of a limit. Because if they did, they probably would have invented calculus. Came pretty close. I think Archimedes, I'll, maybe I'll do this in another video. But Archimedes uh, came very close to coming up with a concept of a limit. He did come up with a method for, for uh, estimating the value of pi. It was called the method of exhaustion. And you can actually think of that process as a limit. Um, maybe I'll do that next time. But anyway, that concludes my, my talk for today. So thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.